Well, on the new piece, I have to do a little research on it to get the feel of it, I guess. Like on that Santa Rita, I went all over looking for pictures and something uh, asking what she represented, and finally I got to where I thought I could tackle it. The older penitentes, they know something about Muster Risanto, I guess. On our last meeting in the Morada, we talked about her a little bit. And usually they, uh, they should have one of them in the Morada all the time. She belongs, she, she's a penitente santo. I use Aspen mostly for my, for my figures, and I've used cottonwood, but I always go back to Aspen. I, I like it. I like to do the crucifix, and uh, I like to do the death cart. In the Church of Santa Cruz, this Reredo stands sentinel in a chapel once used by members of the Third Order of St. Francis, the Lay Brotherhood. The recall of the Franciscan friars, after 200 years of service to New Mexicans, brought about a severe lack of religious guidance. Arising to fill this need, the Brotherhood of the Penitentes, dedicated to the tenets of discipline and penance acquired from the friars, followed in the footsteps of the crucified Christ through reenactment of his passion. O oh Jesus, for my faults you suffered so much pain. At your feet you see me repentant, sweet Redeemer. Look, O oh sinner, on the Christ Jesus nailed to the cross. Look on the Son of the Eternal, expiring for love of you. Specialized santos were created for the use of the penitentes, death, in all her stark and terrifying magnitude, and the life-size Christ, tragic and wounded. alabado todos los viernes del año saco un ánima de pena y la suya de pecado quien lo sepa y no lo cante quien lo oiga y no lo aprenda el día del juicio final sabrá lo que este contiene This is the fifth generation in my family, and uh, I've been carving since I was seven years old. So uh, I feel that I'm one of the old timers. See, my all my folks have been wood carvers, and we'd make not only uh, santos, but we made musical instruments, we made uh, uh, furniture. Oh, you see, in years past, probably there was maybe seven of us here. Now look how many there are here. And I know that if we did ask people, there would be at least 70 people here representing the arts, the culture. But then, on the other hand, we must give credit where it's due. The people that are responsible for us to keep this art going and to keep it the way it was then are people that came from back east. Hello. Santa Fe's annual Spanish market has encouraged many New Mexican folk artists since it was begun in the 1920s by the Spanish Colonial Arts Society. Although the contemporary Santero and Santera now carves predominantly for a secular audience, santo making remains a means for maintaining a cultural identity, a link attaching the present to the past. And you get tired of just working on one thing, you know, like when I carve, I, I work on different things. 
You know, like I, I start, you know, with a santo and then go into bird and I make crosses or squirrels. You know, just like I do a whole bunch of them, you know, at a time. I might start at San Pascual. You know, probably I'll work a couple of hours, you know, and I get tired. And then I leave it and then I start doing a beaver. And I finish it and I sand it and I might end up making three or four or five or a dozen. You know, it just depends, I guess, the way I feel. A lot of people ask me, how long does it take you? I mean, I haven't even, you know, timed myself because I don't work on it, you know, so, like um, spend a whole day working on one thing. You know, I, I do a lot of them. In the 1920s, Jose Dolores Lopez, by not painting his distinctive carvings, broke the tradition held by generations of carvers from which he had descended and affected the generations which followed. The patronage of the Spanish colonial art society, the native market, and other crafts movements encouraged many other carvers, Celso Gallegos, Anastasio Segura, Griego, Ortega. Some craftsmen, such as Patrocinio Varela, received support from the Works Progress Administration Arts Project during the 1930s. I like San Jose. He's my favorite. I've done large, really tall San Jose's. Other Santeros, like, uh, like um, my friend up in Dixon, um, Horacio, does beautiful, beautiful crucifixes. You know, well, you know, it's like him. You know, I, I go back to one Santo that's my favorite, and I really, really thoroughly enjoy. And that's for me, that's San Jose. You know, I, I'd love to do the Santo more than any other Santo. You know. You know, I think that as eventually a Santero picks up a, an empathy or uh, sensitivity for one particular Santo, and he sort of calls him his own. You know, after a while, he he uh, he likes you know he likes his attributes for one thing. That's what I feel. You know, I I like San Jose's attributes. You know, but I also like the feeling about him. You know, uh, when you're actually carving him. You know, in the end result, with his crown and his flowers surrounded by flowers. You know, that's to me that's kind of very special. You know. People come over and buy what I have or order something. They don't always come to me. Sometimes I get a letter or a phone call. They want something by some time. And uh, I got a letter from a priest in Canada about two weeks ago. He wants a Holy Trinity. And yesterday somebody came here and told me that a friend of his wanted a San Francisco. So. I'm going to start on that one pretty soon, too. It makes me feel good that I can make santos. Uh, like this one, I made this in Rita. Well, we had a lot of fun, I think. <laughs> but it's a uh, pretty santo. Oh, I like color, man. <laughs> color is really, uh, that's my expression, is a color. Oh, San Isidro comes directly from Spain, and he was related to the de Vargas family, the de Vargas that founded Santa Fe. There's several different sayings here in New Mexico of him. The one that uh, I've heard from old people is that he didn't uh, go to mass on his saint's day. And, of course, God was a little bit upset about this whole thing, and tried to convince him to go by threatening him to ruin his whole garden and things of this sort. He stepped working, so uh, what he did was send an angel to do his work for him. And in some pieces in, in old folk art, you'll see that the angel's praying and San Isidro's working. And then the other one is, of course, that he didn't go mass on Sunday. Uh, God threatened him with uh, many th different things, but one of them, he says, I'm going to send you a bad neighbor. 
And he says, that I do not want. I can handle anything else that you have, but not a bad neighbor. And, you know. Today, Santeros are as much a part of their society as they were a hundred years ago. They continue to be an artistic, religious, and mystical reflection of New Mexico's Hispanic life. Yo soy un santero humano que me bautizó un ministro. Es cierto que vendo a Cristo, pero lo vendo de palo. Hizo Dios el paraíso y a todos nos redimió y a cada uno le dejó la mantención por su oficio a unos para dar perjuicio, a otros para buen cristiano, a otros baraja en mano para poderse mantener. Y yo puedo agradecer que soy un santero humano. A todos nos hizo Dios, hizo al grande, hizo al chico. A cada uno le dio su oficio, y ese fue el que a mí me dio. De ese me mantengo yo, y a nadie le doy perjuicio. Más de lo justo no quito, y a nadie le pido un pan. Pues yo soy hijo de Adán, que me bautizó un ministro. No, tiene cimiento duro. Hasta estaco tiene. Sí, señora. Oh, sí, sí, sí. Hay carpinteros y sastres, zapateros y albañiles, otros que hacen barriles, toneleros, calafates. Como está probado y visto, pues cada cual con su oficio se debe de remediar y de mí no ponerse a hablar porque vendo a Jesucristo. Cuando Dios quiso formar a todas las criaturas, les concedió en su ternura el oficio a cada cual. Nos debemos de conformar, pues Cristo nació humanado y sin mancha de pecado. Y le hago saber primero que vendo a Cristo en madero, pero lo vendo de palo. <risa> 